Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, I just wish we showed up. You know, that's that's just not who our team is. Um, but Kentucky had um, a lot to do with it. You know, uh, as a coach, you know, I've known John since he was at Pitt as an assistant and at UMass. I was at Holy Cross. I had a lot of respect for how hard they play. And I know all week they talked about fighting and finishing and they outfought us and they outfinished us in every phase of the game. Um, they're very talented. They're deep. They're long. Um, but we're better than that. We really are. We won an NCAA game last year. We lost two players and we're trying to figure it out, obviously. Um, but the credit goes to our opponents and today Kentucky, the crowd, we're up, everything uh, was what it was supposed to be, but we didn't step up to the challenge, um, which is it's just disappointing, but we need to learn from it. We've played Arizona, Villanova, um, Cincinnati, Ohio State, Maryland, all teams that won the national championship before, and today we played Kentucky, who's won it many times. And uh, it's a learning experience for our players, for our coaches, but it's just great for our program and our university. I'm very uh, thankful and appreciative uh, to be here today. Questions? Questions, please. Is there anything, Coach, that you think set the tone? Jerry. Yes, sir. Anything Good to see you, Jerry. Thank you. Anything set the tone, do you think, early on? No, early we were okay, but I, I, I put the blame on me. Kentucky really protects the basket and they play that pick and roll defense so that, you know, they were, John is a smart guy, obviously, and we had a number of open looks at threes early that if we made it would have been a little bit different. But as the game went on, we just started taking awful threes. So uh, once we started taking bad shots and they rebounded and outlet it and got out, you know, then it's, then it's really difficult. So I think early, we were okay, and then we just started taking poor shots. Um, I don't think we turned it over as much as we took the poor shots. We took so many um, ill-prepared threes. Uh, we had 13 turnovers to their nine. So, but it was it was poor shots, and it was you know then it turned into their transition, and it turned into uh, you know a long night for us. But there, you know, I, I just knew. I know John from Five Star Basketball Camp, and I, I look at him not as this you know mega god millionaire he's a basketball coach and he had a week to prepare uh you know for a basketball game and they were prepared i thought we were prepared we were tired we just had a, a really good one the other night and we had to travel and so forth and so on but you give him a week to get these guys ready to fight in this building and, and obviously it's, it's a difficult building and it, and it got away from us but i'm proud of my players because they're good kids and they're better and we'll learn from it, but it stings, and it's it's hard. We already played at Notre Dame. We played here in Kentucky. We played DePaul, who might be playing as good as anybody in the land. Um, so it's it's uh, it's a tough schedule, but it's it's it gets us ready for March, and these games uh, do that. But you know, right now in December, it it hurts, and that's that's college basketball. That's why it's the greatest game ever made. Uh, you talked about Montgomery had his best game of the year. Was that just a yeah. bad matchup for you guys, or did you take You know, I always tell our guys that if he, and he caught most of his, other than the dunks that he had, the, like the elbow, the 16, 15 contested shot is not a good shot. And but, but we, he's a good player. Take nothing away from him, but we didn't give him any resistance. You know, he was just making shot after shot, and you have to get up and make him dribble and put the ball to the floor. So we made it too comfortable for him. Not, think, not taking anything away from him, but you know, it was a coming out party. He had 25 points and uh, he's a heck of a player. And you know, like, and Nate Sestina, we, we were the first guys to recruit Nate at Fairleigh Dickinson. I love the kid. He's in the middle of nowhere, nowhere New York. And uh, you know, he gets hurt and it opens up another uh, window for Kentucky. And, and uh, so when he gets back, this team is, you know, you guys know how good they are, but. Today, um, they were really good, and um, I, I, I just I just wish you saw our team play better. And I think you can see it in snippets, but uh, in totality today, you know, obviously it was not our day. Greg, you said you and John go way back. Yes. I mean, he's 60 years old now, but he's still pretty animated. Yes. On the court. 
Can you kind of share with us how his coaching style and demeanor has changed over the years in your eyes? It's it's funny. It hasn't it hasn't changed that that much, you know. And, and I was talking to Bruce Hamburg, we know him forever, and it's like, number one, I've never seen him with a hat on. Not that that means anything, but he never has he's got nice, he's got more hair than I do, so he's doing he's, he's doing something right. But he's but I think he's a likable coach. Like I, I, as I was coaching with him, his players, you know, and when you're winning by 30, you become you become much more attractive. And when you win national championships, but he's just John Calipari was born to coach. Howard Garfinkel from Five Star Camp gave so many Mike Fratello and and Yuvi Brown and Bobby Knight, and I don't put myself in that category. But John Calipari and Rick Pitino, it's it's that's the five star roots. And these guys, you coach until you can't coach anymore. And, and, and John's a, you know, and he's ahead of his time. He always has been. He's ahead of his time. And uh, and I just, I'm appreciative of just playing the game and being able to play here. But he hasn't lost. We're all getting a little, you know, I can't believe he's 60, but he's got energy. He flies all over the world and he does so many good things for good people. I got nothing but, but great things to say about John. And um, yeah, he's, he's, he's special. And you guys, I think, realize that. So you said that uh, uh, EJ Montgomery had a coming out party. What about uh, Keon Brooks? It kind of looked like Keon had him coming off party of his own. Oh, yeah, that was a Kentucky festival today. It was, it was a, just a, there was a Christmas parade, I could think, downtown. And anybody that thought that walk on was going to come in and just get a triple double. I mean, it was just, and we had, we had those nights. We came out against Quinnipiac and were nine for nine. At Notre Dame, we were 0 for 18. We're just finding ourselves. We've been banged up, we're young, and we're just trying to figure it out. And today, the moment was a little bit too much for our for our team. We're just not there yet. And, uh, you know, the last four years, we've won three championships, two conference championships, a regular season uh, championship, and an NCAA tournament game. And, and that's what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to get the respect of the people of Kentucky. I, I lived in Independence, Kentucky for a year, so I know what Kentucky basketball is, and uh, I coached Wayne Turner, I coached Alan Edwards, I coached those guys in the IBL back in the day, and I, I, and I, I really um, respect Kentucky basketball and, 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 and the fans and, and everything. This is surreal. I'm a Jersey kid that's coaching in, in Rupp Arena. It, should, it shouldn't happen, and, but I got my shot, and I didn't make the most of it, but hats off to Kentucky. Greg, you said you played at Notre Dame because yeah. you guys played at DePaul. Uh, is there anything distinctive about playing in Kentucky, you know what I mean? The size, yeah. My first Final Four was Villanova, Georgetown, and everybody sold their ticket, and I wasn't selling my ticket. And I sat in Rupp, and I remember Memphis State back then was in it with St. John's and Georgetown and Villanova. And when I came back this morning, the size of it is just, it, that's, it's, it's a stunning place. And just, you know, and I know, I remember I had Wayne and Alan Edwards at my house in Independence and 25 people were waiting outside the house so they could say hello to them in my neighborhood. And I'm like, these people are, it's a religion. And I, I, I know that, but th this place is, is, is special. So it's, a, it's an honor. We played at Arizona, we played at, you know, Villanova and, and Notre Dame and Maryland, but th this place is, and that's why I said to John when we came out, I said, John, this is, I know why you're not leaving here. I mean, I, it's a hard place to leave. And Coach, since you've been familiar with Nate Sestina for so much longer than we have, yes. what kind of a tangible difference do you think he will make for this team into the new year and into the market? Well, he just gives you another big body. He sets great screens. He's got a toughness um, and a basketball aptitude. You know, he's a Bucknell graduate. So he just, I think he's he's the, the maybe not the missing link, but he's a piece that's gonna, you know, take from, from Richards to Montgomery and Sestina, you know, you can play off that a lot, you know, and then Nate wasn't recruited highly at all. We were on him for a long time. Bob Huggins at West Virginia was looking at him and, and, and he went to Bucknell, uh, which is a great institution and a great school, but he's, he's a high level player and a, a, a high level kid from a great family, great high school coaches. So he's just gonna make everybody everybody better and I think you guys saw that in the preseason and probably saw it in the first you know few games before he you know got hurt but I just want to thank everybody especially Jerry for the great interview and great talking to people out here and uh, I appreciate the hospitality thank you very much